I drove around America in search of rare retro video games and video game consoles. This was an absolute roller coaster. I found some amazing places and I got robbed. And so the adventure begins. We knew where we were heading, but the first video game store was hidden amongst this enormous warehouse filled with multiple different independent sellers. But after half an hour of searching, I finally found it. My first impressions were that this place looked bloody great. Lots of different accessories for retro game enthusiasts to hook their old consoles up to modern TVs. Plenty of great aftermarket modern controllers too. I'm specifically on the lookout for Game Boys and Game Boy games, so let's see what they've got. Just in one cabinet alone they had some great PlayStation 1 games and some Sega Game Gear titles, all varying in price from about $3 all the way up to $50. As for handhelds, unfortunately, no Game Boys. But they had a huge selection of Nintendo DS and 3DS consoles. Each unit claims to be tested and working and even comes with a power adapter and a game. That's obviously going to bump the prices up compared to if you were to find them online. But it's important to keep in mind that you're also paying for the included warranty and the ability to actually see and hold the item in front of you before you purchase it. That to me is definitely worth the extra price. There was an NES top loader which is rare to see and a jungle green N64 for $160, which according to eBay is actually a pretty reasonable price, especially considering the included warranty prior testing and the controller and the cables. We've been in this shop for like 45 minutes and there is so much stuff, but nothing yet that I'm tempted to buy. So let's try and change that. I really want to pick something up from here because it's a super cool place. Uh, it's just this one here. Thanks. And you want a raffle? Yeah, sure. I got one. <laughs> Let's go. The first pickup was a game I've never heard of called Cluster. I absolutely love the artwork. It's actually a really interesting game which is similar to Tetris but far more complicated. It seems to be worth a little bit less than what I paid, but the condition is absolutely great. Let's go to the next shop. We've arrived at the next location, the bargain shop. But opposite is another place called Heath's Porn, right here. Now I know that everyone commented saying that I say porn in a weird way. Pawn, pawn, the pawn shop. I'm sorry Heath, but while you had an extensive supply of guns, knives and other terrifying things, you are severely lacking in the gaming department. These DS titles are shovelware at best. Four dollars for each of these is unacceptable. Well, I mean, not really a lot in there. Moving on to the actual video game store. This one is called The Bargain Shop. Now it's time for the best and possibly worst store of the day. The Bargain Shop. Paying the highest price for electronics. Never has a sign been more inaccurate. What they actually mean is they buy stuff off the general public for cheap using Facebook Marketplace or eBay or actually just people bringing the stuff into the shop and then they sell it for an absolute fortune. Obviously it's a business so they've got to make profit but some of the prices in here were just off the scale. I mean this is a listing on Facebook Marketplace for the exact same DS they're selling in their store except the Facebook Marketplace one was $90 and theirs was $225. But let's give them a chance and see what's going on in here. 
First impressions are that they have a lot of cool stuff, neatly displayed in these big glass cabinets. Some games were priced, meanwhile others weren't. And there's a really good reason for that, which we will hear all about in just a second. They have a huge variety of games for every different console you could think of, and at lots of different price points. As for what I was looking to buy, my focus as usual was on the Game Boy games. They had a huge amount of games, but I noticed that most of them didn't have prices on. When I inquired about the Pokemon games, the worker told me they were all $100 and up, and I don't know if she just got that wrong or if that's genuinely what they think people will pay for these games, but I'll be honest, it continues to get worse from here. Their handheld consoles were all well over $100 each, and they didn't come with anything at all. There were a bunch of shovelware games for $2 each, which was nice to see. Maybe some of them are a diamond in the rough. They also had a ton of cheap original Game Boy games and a decent amount of cheaper DS games. But just when I try and find something positive to say, above those cheap games was a $400 N64, which on eBay sells for less than half of that price regularly. Now it's time to see what I bought, and this was a bit of a mystery. They had some games in their cabinet which were marked as reproduction. And let's just try and pretend they're not still charging higher than eBay prices for these fake games. But when I was looking in the cabinet, I saw other suspicious looking games which weren't marked as fake. So I asked the worker to get them out so I could take a closer look. This Sonic Genesis game was surprisingly real. You can tell because there's a number stamped on the label. That's not 100% proof, but it's certainly a very reliable indication. The Sonic Advance 2 game, however, looked terrible. The label was without a doubt fake. It's literally been cut by a potato. What about the Mario Kart Super Circuit? Well, this game actually looked really legit, but there was no number stamped on the label. And if you flip the cartridges upside down, you can see the Nintendo logo printed on the circuit board inside the cartridge above the pins. However, the Mario Kart Super Circuit one has nothing there that I can see. Now, potentially some of these indications aren't the same on the Mario Kart one because it's an Australian copy of the game, but I very much doubt that this game is gonna be real. Do you, um, do you, do you know what the prices are for? I would have to look them up, I'm not sure. Right, okay. What, what, um, do you look them up on like your database? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Could I possibly get the prices of all three sure. of these, please? Thanks. Now, this conversation was really important. They had prices on games under $20 or so, but then when it came to their big ticket items, there was no ticket to be seen. And asking if they had a database was really just to try and catch them out. There is no database. I very much doubt it. My theory is that they just pull up eBay and look at the latest sold listing and quote the most expensive one. They probably don't actually want to sell these games because if they do, they don't have anything really good in stock. Cool, yeah, I think I'm just gonna get the, um, this one, please. Yes, okay. thank you. Thank you. Oh man, I could have done better. I really wanted to buy a Game Boy so I could test and play these games. So I headed back to trade it from the previous episode and I cannot believe what I found. I just found two insanely cool Game Boys. I just found two insanely cool Game Boys. <laughs> Is there any objections to me buying that other one too? You did see it first. Oh no, you, that's you. Well, I don't have a Game Boy YouTube channel. <laughs> So what we're looking at here is a US exclusive Who Are You Game Boy Advance SP and a Red Play It Loud DMG Game Boy, both really reasonably priced according to eBay. So now we finally have a Game Boy to test this Mario game. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Chances are it's gonna work absolutely perfectly. He says as it turns on and it doesn't work. This is the problem with aftermarket games. They just are not as reliable and they're also not worth the same. If I sell this on and it's fake, I have to disclose that. It's definitely not worth the $45 I paid for it. 
at most, this is just worth what someone's willing to pay for it. And how much are you willing to pay for a fake game when you can buy them on AliExpress for like $5? After removing the label, we can take a look at the text on the back. The real one has far sharper and defined characters, whereas the fake one is much bolder and more rounded. Okay, so let's remove the screw. So this is the real one. You can see there it has the Nintendo logo and a couple of chips which all look to be very in line with what you'd expect. And here is the Mario Kart one. Let's open it up. Oh boy. Well, there we go. It's fake. Surprise, surprise. Now bear in mind there are so many different fake Game Boy games out there and they've been made for absolute decades. I would say this is on the older side given how terrible it looks, but some of the newer ones do actually even have the Nintendo logo printed on the circuit board. So it's getting really hard to tell if they're real or fake. Well there we go, it's my own fault. I'm stupid for buying it in the first place, but maybe I can, you know, take it back and, and refund or exchange it. Oh.